President Obama, in his State of the Union address, told Congress and the nation about what he regards as the growing inequality between those with great wealth and most of the rest of us. Despite our often sharp disagreements with the president, we want to find common ground on the critical issues facing our country. With that desire in mind, uh, allow me to make three observations about the president's comments that are especially noteworthy. First, the president has said he celebrates America as the land of opportunity and hope for people from all over the world. On this, we agree. However, Mr. Obama's policies punish the very system of free enterprise that provides this opportunity through punitive regulatory actions such as Dodd-Frank and other regulations on business costing billions of dollars. His policies and tax structure have penalized marriage and families, which are vital to economic fairness and success. It is unfair to penalize marriage in the tax code, and it doesn't make economic sense either. Mr. Obama seems to equate hard work and the desire to do better for oneself and one's family with greed. He seems to identify hard work with materialism, and he seems to argue that in order to rise, you have to step on others. The president blames the free market for problems with our economy, yet continues to promote policies that pick winners and losers with your tax dollars. His proposals diminish economic growth and weaken opportunity for prosperity in our country. Incentive and hard work and dedication should be rewarded. The American dream has proven real for generations. Historically, here in America, we know that hard work pays off. And we have held on to the ideal that one day our kids would do better than we did. Yet today, American families are struggling. The president's policies have placed additional taxes on working families and additional government mandates on the companies that employ them. The net result has been families losing everything from their health insurance to their source of income. How do we best grow the American dream for the next generation? One of the key ways is strengthening the family. That's why at FRC we have called for removing tax penalties that are biased against marriage and family. Government can't create good families, nor is that the government's role. But government is clearly making it more difficult for many American families. We want to see the child tax credit expanded and get rid of the marriage penalties in our welfare system and in the tax code. Even Obamacare, the president's own signature legislation, contains a marriage penalty. We continue to call for the repeal of Obamacare and its discriminatory tax penalties against American families. Mr. Obama's remarks didn't even touch on another key reason for our anemic economy, the cultural hemorrhaging seen most acutely in the American family. Only 45% of our 17-year-old children have grown up in an intact married family. The mother and father of the remaining 55% have at some time rejected each other as husband and wife. According to the federal government's own statistics, an intact family is better off financially than one that is broken. Its children do better in school and graduate from college in greater numbers than those from broken homes. Strong families are what are best for moms, dads, and the kids. They're also what's best for a strong, vibrant economy. In addition to his flawed critique of our economy and his failure to address the great needs of the family, Mr. Obama continued to tout something Americans know just isn't working. And that's actually it's actually depressing our economic growth and our personal incomes, and that's Obamacare. Obamacare is just not effective. One new study found that last month only 11% of the people who signed up for the president's health care plan didn't already have insurance. How does reinsuring the already insured help anyone? But Obam Obamacare is also driving down the standard of living for ordinary Americans. It's full of taxes on small businesses, penalties on working people, federal mandates which result in reduced hours and an inevitable rise in health care premiums. Rather than bring the nation's economy together, Obamacare is only driving it further apart. Obamacare is penalizing individuals and families who are still struggling to recover from the recession. Also, Obamacare contains a rule that requires employers, such as Christian colleges, religious hospitals, and faith-based businesses, to provide their employees health care plans that cover pills and procedures that go against their deeply held religious convictions. If they don't agree, they face crippling fines. Employers should not have to choose between violating their consciences or paying severe fines that threaten jobs 
and could even force them to drop health care coverage for their employees. This rule, or mandate, hurts families and women. It's unfair, and thankfully, most Americans oppose it. I hope the president will listen to them. Religious liberty is also under a threat. From bakers in Oregon to photographers in New Mexico and court clerks in New York, people whose convictions are grounded in historic Christian teaching are being told there's no room for them in public life. Mr. Obama likes to talk about American values. Mr. President, it's not an American value to trample someone else's conscience. It's not an American value to repress someone's practice or his, of his or her religion. It's not an American value to use the federal government to undermine the will of the people in the states that believe marriage is between a man and a woman and that children do best with a mom and a dad. These are not American values. They only increase the unfairness Mr. Obama decries. And as public policies, they simply don't work. If we want real hope and change, we'll enact policies that build stronger families and a stronger economy, preserve our heritage of religious liberty, and protect rather than undermine marriage. If we don't, the only place we'll find American values in this city will be in the Smithsonian. But I'm optimistic, and I believe in America, and I believe that we can and will do better to restore the family, and with it, our economy and our country.